Hey, it's Sunday, February 28th, and you're watching The Great Last Rewatch. Today we're talking about the season 6 episode, Lighthouse. This was a Jack-centric episode, and in the flash sideways, we learn that Jack had a kid with someone, we don't know who the mother is, my thoughts are that it's probably still Sarah. The two big theories, I guess, are that the mother is either Juliet or it's still Sarah. Either way, the actresses are on other shows now, so they probably didn't have time to be on Lost. So that's probably why we didn't see who the mother is, but then it also creates a nice mystery. I want to talk about two things, mostly. The references to Alice in Wonderland and the numbers. There's a lot of numerology in this episode. Starting with the episode, it's the 108th produced hour of Lost, so 108. Jacob tells Hurley to turn the dial to 108. The name at 108 is Wallace, so it's probably somebody that we don't know, although it could be somebody that we do know. Obviously Jack's number on the dial is 23, same as in the cave, all that's the same. There's four mirrors on the lighthouse. Apparently the notes on Hurley's arm tell him that the lighthouse is four stories tall and measures 88 feet. Though from what I heard in um, Jorge Garcia's podcast is that he was he just kind of scribbled some stuff on there, and he's a smart guy, so I'm guessing he just did that. He made a water tattoo so that it would all look the same in every, um, shot, and he was instructed to just write some stuff and make it look kind of like, make it so that you couldn't really read it. And he's a very smart guy, so I'm sure he knew instinctively to put four and eight and the numbers in there in different... I'm sure he got instructions as to some of the things to write, but like in our flash forwards from season four when he's in the mental institution and drawing the igloo and the cold and then the sphinx in the desert, he came up with those himself. And then Alice in Wonderland is brought up in this episode quite a bit. And the actual copy of Alice in Wonderland that David has is an annotated Alice, uh, which is a combination of both Alice in Wonderland and the sequel Through the Looking Glass. And from what I hear, I haven't read them. Alice in Wonderland takes place during the summer, and then Through the Looking Glass takes place during the winter. They're kind of like opposing each other. The sequel has no references to the first one in it. Um, kind of the same sort of feeling as how our flash sideways work. They have no references to the old, you know, our original timeline, but they are connected. This episode is also kind of a mirror image of the season one episode, The White Rabbit, which is also a reference to Alice in Wonderland. Jack finds the spare key to his ex-wife's or David's mother's house. I guess we don't know if it's his ex-wife under a ceramic white rabbit. The actual mirrors in the lighthouse are references to Through the Looking Glass, Their Looking Glass. Jack mentions the cats that are in the book Through the Looking Glass, which are Kitty and Snowdrop, which are a black cat and a white cat. It also seems that according to Lostpedia, David's cell phone number is a 734 area code, which is an Ann Arbor, Michigan area code. I would have to agree with Leslie that Claire just got really, really interesting. Uh, also a little creepy. And I mean, by a little, I mean a lot creepy. Like, kind of, I want to have nightmares. She is really scary. Oh, I also wanted to mention that last week when I was talking about the names on the walls, I said Lewis without even thinking of Charlotte Staples Lewis. Da! Some names that we saw on the lighthouse dial that are kind of important. Rousseau was on there at number 20. 51 is Austin, Kate Austin. So she was on there, we just didn't see her in the cave. Campbell, as in Brother Campbell. 
it's at 129. Again, sorry, this is a little late. I was uh, under the weather this weekend. Um, but I will be back with next week's episode, Sundown. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.